A news conference is happening right now where State Representative Misha Maynor is announcing a lawsuit against Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. 11 Alive's Ariana Manish joining us live from the Capitol. Ariana, tell us why this lawsuit is being filed. Well, Aisha, this loss, this press conference, rather, it just wrapped up. Representative Misha Maynard, she is suing DA Fonnie Willis, Fulton County Commissioner Marvin Arrington, as well as the Fulton County Board of Ethics. Now, the representative, she's claiming that she's a victim of a years-long criminal stalking case. She's alleging that DA Fonnie Willis failed to prosecute properly her alleged stalker. Now, she's claiming the stalker was a former campaign volunteer. Now, she says that the DA allowed this former stalker, this alleged stalker, to be released on bond for non bondable crimes and didn't contact witnesses that she provided. She wanted the DA to properly investigate this case, and she says that the DA failed to do so. She also claims that uh, Marvin Arrington um, mishandled the prosecution of this case as well as he was representing the alleged stalker. She was also joined by victims that one father says that his son had been held in Fulton County Jail for over 90 days. And she's saying that these people, they're all victims. They share the same stories of mishandling by the DA's office. Take a listen. Accountability is paramount, especially with the Fulton County DA failing to assist citizens affected by domestic violence, stalking, or unjust incarceration. The connection is victims. This today is about victims. And... DA Fonnie Willis is the chief court officer from the state in Fulton County. She directly impacts what is happening in the jail. Now, she says she, she wants the DA to admit her missteps in prosecuting her case. She says she also wants a jury trial against Willis, Arrington, and the Board of Ethics. All right, my friends, J.R. Duke's back with you. We've been talking about yet another lawsuit filed against Fulton County DA Fannie Willis. Of course, as you know, Fannie Willis, the corrupt DA of Fulton County, is the gift that never stops giving. We just love Fannie Willis, so we have to talk about her criminal enterprise one. Once again, you were just listening to a video from a setting representative in the Georgia Assembly out of the 56th District. She is claiming in her lawsuit that essentially Fannie Willis allowed her stalker to walk. And she accuses Fannie Willis of not following the law, keeping her informed like she was supposed to each and every step this case took. The bottom line is Fannie Willis, unbelievably, I know you're shocked, is accused not only of not following the law, but she's accused of collaborating with the current Fulton County chairman, this Arlington individual, and essentially allowing this stalker to go with nothing more than a slap on the wrist, aka a misdemeanor. So we're going to continue discussing this. I want you to listen to a few more comments that the state representative made yesterday, and then we're going to go ahead and drill down into this. It's crucial to support victims and hold accountable those who neglect their duties ensuring justice for everyone. If Fonnie Willis investigated my case, she would have spoken to my secretary at the Emory Healthcare, who would have shared with her, my stalker repeatedly came to my job to harass me. There are approximately 13.5 million victims of stalking in the United States every year, and I wanna give you a few stats. 67% know the person stalking them. They aren't strangers, as most believe. One in three women and one in six men are stalked. 16% of transgender people, 9% know their stalker from work. 75% receive unwanted calls. Now, I don't want to make light of anything. This woman obviously has had a traumatic event happen to her, but it was kind of hilarious just a second ago when she's talking about the fact that stalkers will continuously call their victim. And on cue, you hear a cell phone ringing in the back. I don't know if you caught that or not. But on a serious note, obviously this representative is correctly pointing out the problems with stalking. And the reason why Fannie Willis's failure, her absolute failure to do her job, to do her duty, is of a serious matter. And there must be consequences to Fannie Willis's inaction. Now, folks, just as a general service announcement, just like the representative is doing, she's making her mess her message. If you are a victim of stalking, please don't hesitate to call your local law enforcement or simply pick up the phone and dial 911 and they will help you. 57% 
have their stalkers show up unexpectedly. 52% are surveillance, 40% are targeted by intimate partners. They threaten to share intimate images of their victims. Friends, you just heard her make the comment that stalkers will routinely threaten their individuals with images or videotapes they have of their former partner or whatever. Let this be a lesson, especially to all you young folks that may be listening to me right now. Do not let anybody take an intimate picture and or video of you, period. Please heed my advice. Do not do this. Now, during this press conference that this representative gave, these are the exact and specific allegations she's making against DA Fannie Willis. In my own experience seeking justice from Fulton County DA Fannie Willis, I dis discovered concerning actions that were brought to my attention from an investigative reporter. It revealed collusions between my stalker, aided by Fulton County Commissioner Marvin Arrington, who also served as my stalker's personal attorney. This conflict of interest is alarming as it compromises the very justice system meant to protect victims. Despite presenting numerous witnesses, DA Willis did not interview one single witness. Over 20 were presented, including my pastor after he joined my church. This pattern of neglect and misconduct persisted, violating my rights under Marcy's law as she offered a plea deal without consenting me. The passage of the Prosecuting Attorney's Qualification Commission is a vital step towards accountability, providing recourse for citizens failed by the system. Fulton County Commissioner Marvin Arrington chose to take a stalking case against a state representative all while he oversees and appropriates funds to the DA's office. As a criminal defense attorney, Fulton Commissioner Marvin Arrington defends his clients in the same courtroom he appropriates and has unlimited access to the judges. DA Willis is charged to represent victims in Fulton County, the very people Commissioner Arrington's private clients seek to dismiss claims against. Two attorneys, family friends, law school classmates, opposing each other with one having the authority to chop up charges to benefit the other, and one with the authority to vehemently advocate for funding. A perfect storm for an unknowing victim. During jail calls, Commissioner Arrington and my stalker plotted various actions, including manipulating judges, leveraging political influence, and conversations that were had between Commissioner Arrington with Fannie Willis before she was even sworn into office about my case. Commissioner Arrington discusses getting favors from the chief jailer of the Fulton County Jail on behalf of my stalker and the criminal behavior of other elected officials past and present is discussed on these jail calls. Despite presenting numerous witnesses, D.A. Willis contacted no one. D.A. Willis and ADA Yolanda Mack admitted awareness of judges favoring Commissioner Arrington. She never fought for me as a victim, a Fulton County resident. She was always in the pocket of the commissioner and retaliated against me after I contacted the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Violence Against Women, because DA Willis repeatedly allowed my stalker to be released on bond for non-bondable crimes and failed to notify me of court proceedings repeatedly. She never mentioned to the court her conflict of interest and that was she was discussing my case with her close family friend and my stalker's attorney, Commissioner Marvin Arrington, before she was even sworn into office. The Georgia Democrat Party's decision to grant a convicted felon previously jailed for one year for aggravated stalking, allowing him access to voter data poses a serious risk to every Fulton woman. Campaign software driven by GPS data exposes private information of registered voters without considering the implications of allowing unqualified individuals on the ballot. 
Today, accountability is paramount, especially with the Fulton County DA failing to assist citizens affected by domestic violence, stalking, or unjust incarceration. The establishment of PAC offers a crucial avenue of justice, addressing challenges faced by non-legal professionals in navigating complaints against misconduct. Recent legislative changes led by Commissioner Bob Ellis ensures that offices funded by Fulton County adhere to ethical standards, safeguarding the rights of citizens. The communities I represent are disproportionately affected by DA Willis's office, particularly those with underperforming schools. Despite laws mandating timely indictments many languish in jail for months without resolution. Fulton County's jail stay average is 291 days. The national average is 30. 37% of inmates are unindicted in the jail. Three people unindicted have sat in the jail longer than two years. This prolonged detention often is overcrowded in overcrowded conditions reflects a failure of justice and basic human rights. It's imperative that the legal system upholds its duty to prosecute promptly or release detainees. Each person in the jail is someone's child, parent, sibling, or loved one. The Georgia General Assembly set clear guidelines for DA Willis requiring, requiring her to indict individuals in custody within 90 days. Those arrested without bond must have their case presented to the grand jury within the same time frame. There are no exceptions to this law. If individuals have been incarcerated for over 90 days while the DA takes extended vacations with her special prosecutor, it's a direct insult to Fulton County families and those in jail. Consider this sleeping on the floor for two years without facing a judge is not justice. It's a glaring example of inhumane neglect, which the law is designed to rectify, either prosecute or release. The ACLU reported 503 unindicted inmates that were incarcerated at least 90 days. 447 were sleeping on the floor. DA Willis is required to notify a judge if a person remains in jail on felony charges without indictment for more than 45 days. Sheriff Labatt faces a significant challenge with his colleague neglecting her duties, leaving him to manage an overcrowded jail. If DA Willis addressed the backlog as requested, lives could have been saved. Everyone deserves justice. By the end of 2023, 90% of the people in custody were black. This is not a time to give awards to people for failing to do their job. The Georgia General Assembly enacted a law mandating bail amounts to reflect a defendant's income. Excessive bonds can be rectified swiftly under these laws. Mismanagement in the DA's office shouldn't jeopardize someone's livelihood. Before I go to the next speaker, I want to say one last thing. DA Willis, backed by Commissioner Arrington, has spent millions prosecuting two celebrities. This allocation of funds adversely impacts the residents I represent. Standing up against political figures like Arrington and Willis is daunting. Living in a system that feels broken and corrupt and facing retaliation for protecting my family is disheartening. Yet I am supported by brave individuals that were not scared to stand next to me. There are also many brave individuals that have been contacting me about their stories. To those listening, don't hesitate to share your story. You have a community of supporters that will assist you. If you've been victimized by Commissioner Arrington or DA Willis, contact my office. Remember, victims should never blame themselves.
for things beyond their control. There's no excuse for anyone to violate, harass, intimidate, or stalk you. Trust your instincts and take steps to protect yourself. So that is the current representative in Georgia, Representative Maisha Maynor, giving a press conference, slamming and exposing DA Fannie Willis and showing the amount of corruption going on while she's off with her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, traveling all over the United States, having luxury vacations all over the world. There are people right now in the Fulton County Jail that are serving two years in custody without even being charged. It is just amazing how inept these people are, and it is shocking that Fannie Willis continues to get away with this type of illegal, unethical, and obscene behavior. And obviously, the Fulton County Commissioner, this Arlington guy, is in bed with her, probably literally. Maybe that's another investigation we need to have. Folks, this has to be exposed. We have to shed a light on this so that everybody understands clearly what is going on in Fulton County, Georgia. Now, as we've talked about on previous videos, Fulton County, Georgia has a long, a very long history of corruption. It is a corrupt county. It is a corrupt place ran by corrupt politicians like this Commissioner Arlington and DA Fannie Willis, and we must do better as a society. You heard this particular representative point out two celebrities, and she, of course she's talking about former President Donald Trump and others, that the county has spent at least a million dollars on to date, which has went into the pocket of Nathan Wade and de facto the pocket of DA Fannie Willis. And at the same time, they can't even prosecute and handle the cases they currently have going on. If you have been watching the news, you may have picked up on the fact that they have prisoners dying yearly. I believe it was 28 individuals last year while they are in custody in the Fulton County Jail. Outrageous what is going on, and someone must do something to stop this. And of course, this particular representative is doing the best she can. Now, there's one fact that's not widely publicize throughout this whole nonsense that's going on. And that is the stalker of this particular representative Maynard is a guy that is not only her stalker, but this individual is actually, if you can believe this, is actually running against her right now for her seat. That is just unbelievable. See, what happened was is she changed parties because she was tired of the woke Democrats and some of their policies concerning schools and school vouchers and, and some other issues. But take a look at this here. This particular guy right in the middle is Corson or Corwin Monson. This is his mugshot with some paperwork beside his photo right here. This guy is actively running against her in the 56th district there in Fulton County. And there's a good chance he might actually win if you can believe this. This guy had served a year in prison for charges, as she said, related to some kind of aggravated stalking. Imagine that. Unbelievable. I have a video I'm going to share with you on a, at another day that shows this particular guy, Corin Munson, giving an interview with one of the local personalities there, and they don't even mention Republican or Representative Maisha Maynard and the crimes he's already been convicted of. So let me just tell you briefly what she is alleging, and it's very clear to me what's going on. Right here on your screen, you have the Representative Maynard, who you just saw speak. You have her stalker, this Corin Munson, who was also running against her in in the upcoming election for this particular district, and then Commissioner Marvin Arrington. Remember, Arrington is the county commissioner. He controls the purse strings for the entire county. If something has to be spent money on, this is the guy in charge. He went ahead and took on Monson's case as his attorney. Yes, that's right. He's the commissioner and this guy's attorney. We have phone calls that I will go ahead and disclose in an upcoming video that shows Monson talking with Arrington. And let's just say they're very colorful conversations. In my opinion, they're unethical. They're definitely, they're probably illegal. They're definitely unethical. And he, Arrington, is coaching Monson on exactly how to have his judge removed off of the case. It's just outrageous that they would have this type of conversation and that 
Arrington would engage in this type of nonsense, this type of behavior, and he is an officer of the court. He is an, a, a practicing attorney, and he's under ethical obligations, not only from being an attorney of the law, but also he is the Fulton County Commissioner. Just unbelievable what's going on. Now, when DA Fannie Willis down here on the right-hand side of your screen, when she was sworn in, or as the representative correctly stated, right before she was sworn in, she was meeting with Arrington and essentially colluding on how they were going to get Monson off and downgraded to another type of crime, aka a misdemeanor. So he would not have a felonious conviction on his record. It's it's it just smacks of corruption. It's just another story involving DA Fannie Willis that we have to shed a light on. And she needs to be held accountable, folks, for all of this nonsense, for all these shenanigans. Just unbelievable. What do you think about this? Please leave me a comment in the comments below. I'm going to stay on the story for a while. I'm going to be all over it, and I'm going to bring you every detail that I possibly can pertaining to this case. So, folks, if you're still with me, you might as well hit the thumbs up button. Be sure to like subscribe so you know when my new videos come out and please share this video with any of your family and or friends that may be woke they may be indoctrinated and they need to see this lawfare they need to see this corruption in fulton county georgia and what the democrats and these woke individuals are doing to our country what they're doing to our former president donald trump and of course what they're now doing to representative Maynard. it's a shame and it is outrageous. Folks, I always say keep that mind free, never give up. And until next time, I am J.R. Dukes.